Um, my name is Paul Wagenblast, and this is a body of work that I created about artists who look like their work. And it's based on Maya Shapiro's article on style, and particularly his physiognomic interpretations of style. And what I gained from that is this idea that style comes from an uncontrollable force out of people, and that those with style uh, will have it show in, in their mark making and in the way that they present themselves. Um, so I've taken some artists that I feel sort of very easily and quickly and strongly represent that idea. Um, uh, Brenna Murphy, Tessa Freeman, Sarah Roach, Robert Burns, and Aiden Koch. And in each of these situations, um, I've selected somebody who, when I think about the work that they make and about the, the, their, their style uh, in dress and in mark making, I felt that they correlated continuously in the quality of uh, line and the use of shape and color and texture and material and um, had this inescapable bind between the things that they make and the things that they wear. The process for this was uh, photographing these artists in an outfit of their choosing against a green screen or a blue screen and then creating digital wallpapers out of their work to put behind them so that the foreground and the background would be combined in this solid screen of style and they would be like a floating head in a world of their own creation. central spot for most people's lives. And uh, with it, or this is just a gallery space that I've redecorated to look sort of like a living room, but a set of a living room. It's not meant to actually be a space for you to come and hang out. Um, but I'm thinking about painting and interior design and uh, how these things interact and how we interact with the spaces that we live in and the things that we own and uh, whether these things that we own are really important and that they like would keep our memories or we would associate them with certain times or if they're really just sort of stuff. I've been wanting to pick color schemes that are already dated in these really obvious ways. So I thought this was pretty 90s. I can't actually build a kitchen onto my house because I don't have those skills, but I have the skills to paint a mural of the kitchen. So get out there and make it happen. And I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> For this project, I really wanted to, I started out thinking about self-portraiture and um, I really wanted to make, I thought that it would be interesting to think about death and think about my own death and what would help me understand that and I think I immediately identified it with making a skeleton and so I started making these pieces and the more complete I, I got it, the more it sort of looked, it looked dead. And that's exactly what I, I guess I was trying to do, but I, I think of death, I guess, as a part of life. <laughs> I guess that sounds cliche, but <laughs> um, so I wanted to endow my, my skeleton with life. I would, I would try and think about ways in which skeletons have been sort of brought back to life. And one of the ways that I think skeletons look most lively is the Day of the Dead ceremonies in Mexico. And um, I was thinking about how I, could, how I could work with those same sort of aesthetics and those same ideas and make my skeleton look more alive. One of the most endearing things about your body that will stay in the world is your skeleton and um, how we treat fossils when we find them. They're sort of elevated almost past their original function. Um, they, they suddenly have a, 
a, a sort of symbolism representing a whole species or representing a whole um, set of I, a set of events or um, or or they they become iconic for events that happen. These two portraits uh, are just two of a series of things doing about school uh, portraiture. The idea of um, you as a subject being photographed in a collective of, say, a thousand images, and they're based off this idea of wow, the, uh, the struggle between what is shown and what is not shown. There is this idea of of also of obstructing one's face and one's expression, um, as well as erasing it also. Um, so just scraping away and adding um, random marks. What I'm trying to get with these paintings is show the homogeneity of, of something like a yearbook. Um, I want these paintings to be suspended in time, and I want to explore that view of where these portraits are going in transition. All of my work, I'm kind of interested in like replicating household objects. This process really is really like a, a profitable um, endeavor. It's uh, kind of takes a, a lot of time and money, and by selling them at these prices, I'm kind of uh, digging a hole for myself in terms of profits but I was interested in attempting to compete with, um, with this huge corporation that uh, manufactures everything that exists in my home and uh, trying to make my own versions of what I usually buy from them. So there's kind of a mystery in how things are created, uh, like through industrial processes. Like a machined object is really cold, you don't have a sense that anyone made made it, um, it just kind of just magically appears there, um, whereas you can really, I think, um, me making this plate makes it even more desirable. When you purchase art, you're kind of purchasing an idea along with it. The price really doesn't seem to be directly associated with like the production costs exactly or like the material cost of what is there, but more on like, it's like the value of the idea of, of the person making it, of the person thinking about something and, and creating it, and you're buying all of that. And so in, the, in this sense, I feel like I'm eliminating that cost, the cost of thinking about it, of the ideas within this piece and trying to price it at, at material cost. In the past, I had done. Um, I'm really interested in the, the relationship between painting and sculpture, and so I did a lot of these modified books. And with those, um, I would just start with the front page or the first page, and I would carve down into it, and I would just kind of like peel these layers up and create almost like a topography in a lot of them, which is kind of like this little contained landscape within the book, and the book kind of framing everything. It's this little contained object that had almost a. Um, like a little world hidden underneath when you open the cover. My collages tended to resemble kind of Greenbergian modern, like high modernist paintings. And there's this pattern going through both of them of different types of, uh, of sublimity or different types of transcendence that were going on within the picture. And so with these, I really thought about, um, or with this one in particular, I was thinking about how I could merge those things and use kind of the formal vocabulary of, uh, of high modernism. and. Um, mix it with the vocabulary of 19th century landscape paintings. So I have this Greenbergian sense of sublimeness, which is all about flatness and about the materiality of the, um, the picture and really addressing the picture plane, and then mixing that with this more kind of illusionistic, um, kind of grand landscape idea.